uh, welcome everyone to the morning session. And this is the third lecture by Xi Yin. And uh, he will uh, continue telling us about uh, C equals one string theory. Okay, uh, thanks. Um, so uh, I'm gonna begin by discussing uh, brains in C equals one string theory. This topic already came up last time. Um, so our worksheet CFT uh, is uh, it's time like boson x naught and together with Liouville. And um, the brains are, uh, uh, by which I mean we mean basically D brains, um, these correspond to a conformally uh, invariant boundary condition, local boundary condition um, of the uh, world sheet CFT. Um, so and typically, uh, the simplest class of boundary conditions we can construct, uh, we can take a boundary condition of uh, the free boson tensor with boundary condition Liouville theory. Now, for the boundary condition of the free boson, uh, you know, we can have a Neumann or Dirichlet type. Uh, the Neumann will give rise to some kind of static brain, and uh, the Dirichlet type, which will be amount to a, which will amount to a boundary condition that's localized uh, in time, is going to give rise to a de-instanton. <clears throat> Um, so, uh, in order to explain uh, to explore this, we're gonna now focus on uh, brains in Louisville theory. So, we'll focus on the brains uh, in Louisville, and you know I'm kind of abusing the terminology a little bit. When I say brain, that's from the space-time point of view. So when I say brain in Louisville, I just mean a conformally invariant boundary condition in Louisville theory. Nothing more than that. Okay. So. Um, so here's, uh, think of this shady region as a world sheet, and uh, then we have some boundary condition on the, over here. Um, now, uh, probably, I think, uh, you know, most students, when they first learn uh, this D brain, about D-brains in string theory, uh, you think of the boundary condition as some kind of boundary um, um, condition on, on the field, say some free boson. Um, uh, now, the Liouville theory of interest is the C, C equals 25 Liouville theory. As we commented on before, it's strongly coupled. Um, so uh, to define this boundary condition precisely, uh, one needs to do a little bit better than just saying uh, what is boundary condition on an elementary field say, on, on some fundamental field. Uh, so in fact, uh, the most convenient way to describe this boundary condition, which actually also allows a complete classification of boundary condition in the unitary Liouville theory, uh, is to um, use the notion of boundary state. So <clears throat> um, let's consider a strip, Liouville theory on a strip. Uh, this can be either Euclidean or Lorentzian. Let's for the, consider Euclidean for the moment. Um, uh, we can have boundary condition B1 on the left side and boundary condition B, B2 on the right side. Um, and uh, um, so there's a Hilbert space uh, associated with Liouville theory on the interval with the you know, um, B1 boundary condition on the, on the left end and B2 boundary condition on the right end. Um, so uh, a quantity one can study is um, this. Uh, cylinder partition function with boundary condition P1 on the left and B2 on the right. So uh, let's say we work in a conformal frame where this length is pi and uh, that circumference is two pi t, uh, then it's well known that, uh, well, you see, uh, you can um, you know, cut this uh, uh, cylinder either in this direction or you can cut it in uh, this other direction. Um, uh, if you cut along this um, uh, blue line segment, um, you can interpret this uh, partition function as a trace over the Hilbert space um, with B1 and B2 boundary condition on the left and the right end of the, of the interval, um, e to the minus two pi t, um, L naught minus C over 24. Uh, I think uh, probably all you know that, and have read Polchinski, you know that uh, with, uh, uh, on, the, on the strip with the conformal boundary condition on the left and on the right, um, there's uh, one copy of your sort algebra that is preserved, whose generator I call L naught. And also, the boundary condition is only possible when the sum of charge and left and right are equal, of course, for the uh, example of interest, it's going to be equal to 25. Um, and, um, but if you uh, cut it um, uh, along this purple circle, uh, you want to decompose. Uh, so you have a, you think of a, you know, the left boundary condition is creating a boundary state we call B1 double uh, bra, and then we'll have a B2 double ket. Um, uh, and uh, uh, then we can view this burning function as uh, the matrix element of a propagator between these boundary states. 
Um, and uh, uh, we need to do a one over t rescaling to put this circle into a, to the unit circle. So then we get minus pi over t, the length becomes pi over t, L naught plus L naught tilde minus C over 12. Okay, so um, uh, now, uh, as I said, if you apply this to Louisville theory, uh, we can classify the boundary, uh, possible boundary conditions. So it turns out that uh, in the unitary Louisville theory, the boundary state is uh, a direct sum uh, of uh, a boundary state of the ZZ type so-called uh, Zamologikov, Zamologikov, uh, whoops, or the so-called uh, FZZT uh, type under states, uh, which comes with the parameter, uh, which I'll we'll, uh, describe uh, momentarily. Okay, so actually, if you know the ZZ and FZZT boundary conditions, it turns out that um, you will be able to construct all the possible boundary conditions of uh, unitary level theory, just as, as their direct sums. Um, so let me now define what these boundary conditions are. So uh, first, let me give you some intuition. So the intuitive uh, picture. Uh, so uh, here's a Liouville field. Think of this as a space uh, of the string theory uh, as before. We have this Liouville potential it's exponentially growing. Um, OK, so um, uh, the ZZ brain, um, uh, this boundary condition, which is you know, if you Take the ZZ boundary condition of Liouville, tensor with Neumann boundary condition in the free, time like free boson x naught, uh, then you get a boundary condition that defines the so called ZZ brain. Uh, this brain, you're supposed to think of it as a point like object that's localized in the strong coupling region of, um, uh, of Liouville field, uh, in the Liouville field direction. So the ZZ brain is sitting over here. Um, that's going to be what it, what it looks like. Uh, as I said, it's just intuition. The FCD brain is a semi-infinite um, brain that extends um, all the way to uh, phi goes to minus infinity, so FZT, uh, and depends on a parameter I call S. Uh, so what is S? This uh, parameter S uh, is roughly speaking the distance between the FZT and the ZZ. All right. So the ZZ brain is going to be at some fixed position. Uh, this is kind of schematic because you know we're in this, talking about the strong coupling region. This is not there's no uh, a priori well defined notion of exactly what the position is, but some point like object is localizing the strong coupling region. But the FZT brain, on the other hand, is a semi infinite uh, brain. It goes all the way to weak coupling region uh, and it terminates at some point uh, at finite distance. Uh, and the point at which it terminates is a free parameter. It's a modulus of this boundary condition. You can deform it continuously. Uh, so uh, you cannot have just have FZZT brain by itself without the no, ZZ you can, brain. You can. No, no. I mean, uh, this is. Um, I'm just trying to compare the two because without talking about ZZ brain, I cannot make the reference to say what uh, the S parameter means. Okay. Uh, but, but there's no relation between ZZ and FZT brain uh, as boundary conditions. Uh, as I said, you can take any direct sum of these. But but if you do not have ZZ brain, then then how how do I parameterize the the, the this S parameter? Uh, look, the parameter S has nothing to do with ZZ brain. What, what I said is mm -hmm. that if you put a ZZ brain there, then the distance mm -hmm. between ZZ brain and the tip of ZZ brain can be interpreted as S. I see. So you can just basically choose arbitrary uh, uh, some some reference point. That's and right. Then That's then correct. Fine. Okay. That's correct. Okay. So uh, now on these brains, they're gonna live um, open strings. Uh, so the open strings we use maybe the green color can be living on the FZT brain, they can live on the ZZ brain, or they can be stretched you know, from FZT to ZZ brain. And there are all these possibilities. Um, OK, so um, let me first talk about the ZZ brain, ZZ boundary condition. Uh, in fact, the defining property, one of the defining properties of ZZ boundary, there's a different way to define it. Uh, the way I prefer to define it, which is purely from the CFT bootstrap point of view, is to say that if you have Louisville theory on the strip, and if you have ZZ boundary condition on the left and on the right, then the Hilbert space uh, of ZZ on the left and on the right is uh, spanned. This is open. This is a Hilbert space of the Louisville CFT on the interval. is spanned by identity operator uh, and its Virasoro descendants. That's it. Okay. So, so in other words, identity operator is the only uh, boundary primary in the presence of the ZZ boundary condition. <clears throat> so this already determines actually 
uh, the boundary state completely uh, using um, this modular uh, bootstrap. So uh, for example, using this similar point function that I described earlier, you see if you put ZZ on both sides, uh, let's say this is pi and that's two pi T, right? So this is uh, by construction uh, because I claim that, um, uh, I assert that the only uh, state on the interval is that any operator in these virasoro descendants. So this pardon function is just the vacuum character of the virasoro algebra with a tau equals it. Uh, and this is, uh, so if I define as usual, q is equal to e to the minus two pi t. Um, in this case, this is equal to q to the minus c over 24 product and from two to infinity, one over one minus q to the n, which I can also write it as uh, q to the minus c minus one over 24 times y minus q over e the function of it. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> um, and uh, uh, now um, we just need to uh, rewrite this in terms of uh, 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 sort of a propagator in the closing channel. Um, and uh, this is this is a easy thing to do because the eta function uh, we know how the how the, what this modular transform is and uh, the, the thing that multiplies eta function is a uh, elementary function that you can just do this uh, transformation of uh, t goes to uh, one over t essentially um, and uh, um, uh, the result looks like this so you can write this as in some continuous integral uh, dp uh, uh, of um, uh, I call this chi uh, one plus p squared uh, tau tilde, where tau tilde is uh, i over t. Uh, so this is the um, uh, Virasoro character. Um, whoops. Uh, of uh, uh, a primary weight h equals one plus p squared. Um, and uh, the coefficient that it multiplies, there's some normalization convention, uh, and uh, I'll write in this way, uh, I call it psi zz p uh, square. So what is this? Um, uh, the claim is that in fact, uh, the zz uh, boundary state here uh, is um, uh, a uh, integral over um, uh, Ishibashi states, vp. Uh, these are the, this is our Ishibashi uh, states, um, associated uh, with uh, the Liouville primary VP uh, and its coefficient, which is essentially the disk one point function. So this is this is this one point function of the uh, operator VP with ZZ boundary condition. Okay, so uh, if you uh, uh, plug this into this uh, you know, matrix element that I described earlier, you'll get precisely this um, uh, integral of the characters. So the, the matrix element of the Propagator between Ishibashi states is just the, the various sort of character and is multiplied by the square of the disk one point function. So, this uh, um, maybe I should write this down a little bit more explicitly. So, in case people are not familiar, so VP uh, e to the minus pi, say, uh, let's call it uh, uh, over t, L naught plus naught tilde minus c over 12, uh, VP prime. Uh, this thing is in fact equal to. Uh, there's a normalization factor which involves the delta function um, because this Liouville tuple function is delta function normalized, but then the rest is going to be a Virasoro character, which is uh, this weight one plus p squared Virasoro character of this tau tilde uh, modulus. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this formula then, uh, well, you know, um, uh, by equating these two, um, we can just read off. Uh, what the, this, this one-point function is. So that determines uh, this, this one-point function psi zz of p to be uh, some function, uh, there's some normalization which is actually uh, important uh, and then cinch of two pi p, that's it. So some very simple expression for this one-point function. Okay, any questions about this? So this completely defines the zz boundary condition. Once I specify boundary state, I'm done. Everything else, you know, every correlator in the presence of boundary of this boundary condition can be now calculated straightforwardly by decomposing into conformal blocks. Um, okay, so now let me define this FZT boundary condition. So FZT boundary condition. Um, 
Uh, now, uh, I should say that, um, you know, colloquially, one often says that the disease boundary condition corresponds to, uh, you know, phi, sort of phi goes to infinity on the boundary where phi is the Liouville field. Um, there's a sense in which that is true. Um, but, you know, that doesn't uh, unambiguously define the boundary condition by itself, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's roughly true. Um, the FCT boundary condition, uh, heuristically, you can think of this as a, some kind of Neumann type boundary condition where the value of the Liouville field on the boundary is not constrained, uh, but rather you're going to add to the action a boundary term, uh, which is the boundary integral of um, Fagon char times the boundary extrinsic curvature k times phi plus a boundary cosmological constant term that looks like this mu b e to the b phi, where this mu b is some constant, it's a boundary cosmological constant at least in a weekly couple of description. This may not be valid in the strongly coupled Liouville theory. So uh, I'm going to, uh, okay, so I said earlier that this FT depends on parameter S. This S is a function of mu B, they're related. Um, the precise relation is uh, scheme dependent. So for me, um, this uh, exactly what mu B is, is not so important. So the S is a parameter that's more physical. Um, but uh, to define this at the full quantum level, in fact, uh, we don't have to uh, make reference to this boundary action. Uh, so it turns out that uh, this Hilbert space with a ZZ on one side and the FZT on the other side, I'll call this HZF. Okay, so this refers to the Hilbert space of the theory on the interval with ZZ on the left, FZT on the right. Um, this turns out to be um, uh, spanned is again spanned by a single primary I call uh, I'll just give it a name, V, maybe ZF, depends on S, uh, and its uh, descendants, your sorrow descendants, uh, where um, um, here, uh, this guy has weight uh, Q squared over four uh, plus um, S squared. Oh, I guess, uh, Earlier, uh, when I was um, uh, writing this stuff, I have assumed, uh, so here I, I should qualify this, I have assumed uh, uh, C equals 25 here, okay? Uh, because I wrote the formula like the, this way, one plus P squared and things like that, that, that all relies on, you know, C equals 25 and Q equals two. Uh, but now let me slightly relax that for a reason that become clear momentarily. Uh, for general Q of the liberal theory, um, uh, uh, this is the defining uh, property of the FZT boundary condition. In fact, um, uh, you see, uh, uh, so here you can think of the S is just some way to, some convenient way to parameterize the weight of this unique uh, primary. Okay, so the FZT brain can be defined by the, uh, the FZT boundary condition can be defined by demanding that this uh, Hilbert space on the strip consists of only this um, single primary. Um, <clears throat> Okay, mm, so it is known that in fact uh, this SMUB, this relation in some specific scheme, it looks like this. Um, not terribly important for my purpose, but let me write this down just to illustrate. There's some relation like this. Okay, um, so this formula relates S to mu B, but this formula looks singular, singular as a uh, B going to one, where C corresponds to C goes to 25. So for this, uh, in this limit, uh, when B goes to one, uh, finite S, generic finite S corresponds to uh, mu B going to infinity because the right-hand side has to multiply by zero. Okay, so uh, uh, this is a sense in which uh, I said, emphasized before that B goes one is strongly coupled with Liouville theory. So in this case, um, it does not actually make sense, at least in the standard regularization scheme, it does not make sense to parameterize boundary condition using mu b uh, because it's singular. It receives infinite renormalization, but instead we should use the uh, appropriate renormalized parameter, which is s. That's physical because it tells you the actual spectrum on this trip. Okay, so from now we're going to work um, with s, not mu b, and we're going to forget about this boundary cosmological constant business. That's gonna, this is going to be my definition of the boundary state. Um, so in fact, um, using the same uh, philosophy, uh, you compute the, if you compute the cylinder-parent function, you'll be able to determine the, uh, the uh, 
uh, disk one point function uh, of uh, uh, um, uh, of the FZT uh, boundary condition. Um, so uh, in fact, uh, let me just tell you what the answer looks like. Um, uh, actually, um, yeah, okay. So we have VP here and FZT on the condition depends on the parameter S. Um, if you study the cylinder parameter function with ZZ on one side, FZT on the other side, uh, you can easily solve it. Uh, and the result is um, this thing, let me call it uh, psi FZT. It depends on S, it depends on P, the view of momentum with the closed string operator um, is equal to some number uh, times cosine of four pi S P over cinch to pi p. So there, again, there's some elementary looking formula for this, not very complicated. All right. <clears throat> um, now uh, let me discuss uh, the uh, Hilbert space of the theorem on the strip with FZT boundary condition on both sides. Uh, this is going to be important because uh, later, uh, if you're going to study open strings on FZT brains. Is the question? A uh, question. Uh yeah, so uh, how do I see that the S parameter is the distance between FZZT brand and the ZZ brand? Oh, that's easy. Uh, uh, well, uh, you see, uh, it basically followed from this. Uh, if you read up the energy of, of this guy here, when, you know, when this guy here, if you set uh, Q to two, but it's equal to 25 Liouville theory, um, S is gonna be the energy of that open stream mode. So if you dress this with E to the I omega X naught, S is gonna be the energy of the open stream mode. This is gonna be the open stream that's stretched between FZT and the ZZ. So, so the so the, the s is basically the length, you know, of the of the, the, the stretch open string. Okay. So so, uh, wait. So uh, s is the energy, but uh, I mean, uh, the the component. Uh, sorry, I thought the component dimension is identified with the energy. No, Maybe absolutely I'm... not. No, 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 no. The component dimension. Uh, I'm talking about space time energy. Okay, so oh, okay. Uh, you see, okay, uh, the common dimension is like k squared. I see, I see. Okay, uh, good. Maybe let me be more explicit. Uh, you know, the uh, the string vertex operator is going to look like e to the uh, i plus minus i omega x naught as a boundary operator, and this v as cf. Okay, so the mm -hmm. the conformal weight, the total weight is uh, omega squared uh, plus. Um, uh, one plus, sorry, minus omega squared because it's time-like plus S squared. And this needs to be equal to one. So mm -hmm. omega is equal to S. I see. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So um, uh, uh, now let's consider the open string with both ends on the FCT brain. Uh, well, this Hilbert space, you can uh, you can study this. Um, it, uh, just now, now that you know the boundary state, it's not very hard to deter determine this. Let me tell you the answer. Um, I'll call this with FZT on both sides, HFF. Uh, so this contains um, primaries, which I, I will label by, I call it, uh, label by uh, psi uh, P FF. It's gonna depend on some continuous parameter P, which looks like Liouville momentum again. So I'm gonna um, I'll just call it P. Um, and it has weight, uh, again, um, Q squared over four. Uh, plus p squared, and we're gonna work, work in the case where q goes to two. Um, so, uh, in fact, if you uh, look at uh, uh, this formula here, um, uh, you know this s is just a, a priori. A priori s is arbitrary parameter, so um, it didn't have to be uh, real, for instance. Uh, so, in fact, uh, it's consistent with the unitarity. As long as uh, S is, uh, if S can be either real or it can be purely imaginary, if its imaginary part is not too big, it does not exceed uh, to Q over two. All right. So, um, uh, so in this case, uh, actually, let me just specialize to the equals uh, twenty-five case where um, I write this as one plus P squared, um, and um, uh, so uh, it turns out that this is just a side comment. Uh, if uh, S uh, is in the interval between uh, I over two and I, uh, it turns out you know, purely imaginary, uh, then there's also another um, uh, state where um, uh, P takes the um, uh, imaginary value 
i times y minus two as absolute value. Uh, this is not terribly important uh, for my purpose because later on I'm going to focus on um, that's not only real but actually large. Uh, this, this is just a side comment. Um, so um, sorry, so, so sorry. In, in that case, you will have open string tachyon because of the the energy is imaginary. Um, uh, that's correct. That's correct. I'm uh, I'm about to say that. Um, so <clears throat> let me draw a draw a picture of uh, uh, the complex S plane. So the allowed uh, values are so here's origin are here and here. Uh, so let's say this is i. This is over here, i over two. Okay, so um, if you are in this range here, uh, this uh, ZT brain would be unstable um, because of this open string tachyon, as, as uh, Jimmy pointed out. Um, and uh, um, over here, uh, this part, all of this, this is this will lead to stable ZT brains. And, but all these bound conditions are actually unitary. Okay, along this, both the red and uh, the blue. Parts are uh, represent correspond to uh, unitary boundary conditions of the Liouville theory, uh, but uh, the red part corresponds to LCD brain that will support open string tachyon. The blue part will not support open string, open string tachyon. Uh, in the boundary state language, uh, the blue part, uh, if the S lies in the blue region, um, there are uh, no relevant deformations on the boundary. That's the statement of absence of open string tachyon. Um, so okay, uh, later uh, we will we will be interested uh, specifically in the limit when s is very large uh, uh, for the consideration of long strings. Okay, so this will come uh, next lecture. Actually, this is just uh, just a, a side remark for for the moment. Okay, any questions so far? Um, so now that I finished discussing brains, sorry, I, I'm theory. still a bit. Yes. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, I'm still a bit confused by. So if I, if the s parameter is in a range from zero to i over two, and in that case p is still imaginary, or, or um, but in, but well, why in that case we we do not have open string in Um. Uh, no, uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, no, uh, the uh, this is a special case, and uh, you know this is has you have to check from the from the actual modular bootstrap. I said if f if s lies in this this interval in this red interval, I claim that there's additional state. Mm -hmm. When s does not lie on this red interval, there's just these these states uh, psi p with the real p. That's it. Oh, oh, you oh, I see. So, I, so, so in that case, the okay, p are still okay. Good, thank you. Yeah, yeah, p just take our arbitrary positive real value. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good. Uh, so uh, now uh, let me discuss the instant house. Um, in fact, before talking about these instant house in um, sequence one string theory, I'd like to. Um, uh, make a few comments about decent towns in uh, ordinary 10 dimensional superstring theory because uh, this is something that uh, people often talk about, um, but uh, uh, most people have never tried to compute the effect of the instant towns. And if you try to compute, uh, you might run into some uh, subtlety, uh, which I'll comment on. So let me make some comments uh, on uh, uh, just 10D. Uh, let's say type to be super string, uh, because this is a theory that admits a standard Dinsen town that's a d minus one brain. So in this case, Dinsen town uh, is the same as um, d minus one brain, or at least the d minus one brain is one type of Dinsen town. So there can be other possible types of Dinsen towns. So this is Dirichlet in all directions, space and time. Uh, what is the role of this object? Um, well. Um, if you do string perturbation theory, uh, you will compute some connected part of the string amplitude, uh, let's say as a genus expansion. So maybe so let's say for some performing amplitude, you have a sphere, you have a torus, and you, know, you all know this, plus da da da. Um, now this series expansion is generally you know, expected to be an, an asymptotic series. Uh, 
well, it may or may not be Bora summable. That's uh, um, that's not clear. Um, uh, but you know, the Dienstentown effects are supposed to be non-perturbative corrections on top of this, as far as clustering dynamics is concerned. Um, but that doesn't really make sense if you do not know how to sum up the perturbative series. Uh, usually, um, we can speak of incident contribution unambiguously in two situations. Uh, either if the perturbative series just terminates for some reason, for some specific observer's interest, or if the perturbative series is somehow borrow summable. Last lecture, I gave, I, I explained that in the example sequence one string theory, it turns out the perturbative series is borrow summable. So it's unambiguous to speak of instant correction or instant corrections on top of that. Okay, but anyway, so in a, situ in a nice situation, you might um, want to include, maybe add, whatever that means, uh, instant corrections suppressed by e to the minus instant time action. Uh, then multiply by some kind of diagram. These diagrams are supposed to be, again, Walshy diagrams with closed strings, um, but with boundaries. And this boundary will end, the boundary of the worksheet will end on the instant time. All right. So, um, so what are, what are the things that can, that can come here? Well, you might imagine that you can have, for example, a disk amplitude uh, with the um, uh, for closing insertions and this boundary. Uh, so let's say this is the instant time and this boundary ends on the instant time. So they're subject to the duration bundle condition in both space and time. Um, well, uh, but actually this is not a leading order diagram. Um, even though it's of this topology. Um, so it's not a diagram with the largest order characteristic. But the leading order diagram is, uh, uh, is, is the following, is uh, four disconnected disks. Each one has a closed string insertion. Uh, you see, uh, this uh, is still a connected amplitude. This is still con a contribution to the connected S matrix element. Uh, why is that? Even though the Walshy diagram is, uh, is disconnected, but the amplitude is a connected one if, because um, these different boundary conditions are tied together. They, they, are, they all end on the same distant time. And in fact, uh, as usual, in, just like in Yamil's instant time, similarly, you have to um, a, perform an integration over the instant time moduli space. In this case, if you have a single distant time, the moduli space is uh, just the position, parameterized by the position of the instant time in the Euclidean space time. All right, so you have diagram like this. So if you go to, so in fact, uh, this disk with four uh, closure insertions is not, not leading order. The leading order is four disks. And then at the subleading order, you can have uh, something like uh, plus uh, uh, disk with the, oh, I, maybe I should draw the same red boundary here. Uh, and, um, uh, and, and so on and so forth. And then, you know, the, then you get to this, uh, this, this uh, disk with, with four closure insertion and, and many more. Um, and then there could be, uh, you know, uh, two instant town, three instant town, instant town, anti instant town, so on and so forth. Okay, so we can have an expansion of the sort. Um, now, it's not clear in super string theory that even if you include all the instant effects, you can capture the, the full, um, uh, uh, you know, non perturbative amplitude because, you know, the this instant action scales like one over string coupling. That's expected. So this instant time action scales like one over string coupling. But we think that in uh, theory of quantum gravity, there's generically expected to be uh, one over g strings e to the minus one over g string squared effects, which does not seem to be uh, captured simply by the decent times. But nonetheless, it will capture potentially some number of corrections to the perturbation theory. Um, so these are some words. And uh, do, do we know how to do any of these calculations? Uh, let me give you an example. So one uh, well-known example is the full graviton or full super graviton, uh, graviton uh, amplitude, non-perturbative amplitude. Uh, okay, um, so um, uh, those of you who know about um, you know amplitude of super gravity uh, would know that um, the four point amplitude of super gravitons, uh, the overall polarization structure is completely fixed by supersymmetry uh, in, the, in the theory with 32 uh, supercharges. Um, so uh, the only 
uh, you know, room to play with is an overall scale function, scalar function uh, that's a function of the Mendelstein variables. So this takes the form and write del 16 q um, f of stu, some function stu, where uh, I'm not going to explain what this super amplitude del 16 q is. I'll just say that the super gravity uh, tree level four point amplitude, uh, you know, tree level super gravity uh, is uh, looks like del 16 q divided by uh, stu. I'm not going to be very careful with the overall normalization constants here. Okay. Um, all right. So um, now, what does this function look like? You can try to calculate this in stream perturbation theory. Um, <clears throat> so, for example, at tree level, you know, uh, there's the well known uh, Versor Shapiro amplitude, um, um, which you probably know that some ratio of gamma functions of the, this Mendelssohn variables. You can then expand all these gamma functions in the power series of S, T, and U. Um, anyway, you'll find that this function f looks like uh, the following. Uh, looks like um, some number. Six, it, it, no addition doesn't matter here, uh, but uh, I'm just going to write it down uh, just to so that I don't have wrong formula here. Um, um, OK, and um, um, one has to be a bit careful about uh, you know, converting the string units to, to Planck units. But anyway, if I'm going to write everything in, in the Planck units here, um, the STU are the Mendelssohn variables in, in Planck units. Um, so, um, uh, so if you have uh, you know, read Polchinski carefully, um, you would know that uh, when you expand the Versor Shapiro amplitude, you have this one over STU. Uh, and then you have uh, something of order one. Which comes with the coefficient uh, to zeta three, uh, by surprise by uh, uh, if you convert this into uh, uh, in Planck units, you come with this comes actually with a factor of tau two to the three halves, where tau two is the you know imagined part of the axiom dilaton, which is the inverse string coupling in type two B string theory. Um, so as usual, this uh, tau, which is tau one plus i tau two, is uh, the background around our axiom plus uh, i to the minus phi. Uh, well, five the delta of type to be string theory, um, and then um, uh, so I'm gonna ex organize this according to a series expansion in powers of STU or powers of, of momentum. So at you know order one, there's gonna be some subleading corrections, uh, perhaps suppressed by further powers of string coupling, which is one over tau two, uh, and perhaps number thirty cor corrections, um, and then uh, can go on. So the next order you might expect you know order S. Or plus d plus u, but s plus d plus u is equal to zero for massless particles. So the next thing you can have is uh, um, something at order uh, s squared plus t squared plus u squared plus da da da. And this coefficient turns out to be uh, the 5 or 16 tau to the 5 has plus uh, subleading corrections. OK, so um, it, uh, it's commonly uh, said that this order uh, one piece uh, is uh, the so-called r to the fourth coupling, effective coupling. And this uh, order s square piece is uh, often called the d to the fourth, r to the fourth coupling. So if you want to reproduce this from some higher additive local effective action, uh, they will look like some term involving four Riemann tensors or four derivatives acting on four Riemann tensors. Um, anyway, um, so why am I talking about this? Uh, my point is that. Uh, for example, if you look at the coefficient r to the fourth coupling, um, this the exact answer is some function of tau and tau bar. So this has a perturbative contribution and possibly non-perturbative contributions. Um, the reason I pick out this specific term is because this thing turned out to be uh, protected by supersymmetry uh, in a way that uh, constrains its uh, tau dependence. Um, and actually, uh, together with supersymmetry and the conjecture s duality, this function can be fixed completely. Um, so the point that this function is, is completely known by indirect arguments. But from the point of view of perturbation theory, it has the tree level piece. There's a one loop contribution. It turns out to be one loop exact at the perturbative level. There's no two loop or three loop contribution. Um, but then there are uh, de instanton corrections. So uh, the tree level term will scale like tau to the three halves. It turns out if you're careful with, uh, uh, with converting to Planck units. And one loop term scales like tau to the minus 1 half. Um, the d and corrections, uh, you know, will look like uh, something like e to the two pi i tau times things that are 
uh, of order one and order one over tau two plus da 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 and uh, e to the minus two pi i tau bar of similar terms and, and then higher order terms. So this corresponds to the instant tongue um, and this corresponds to an anti the instant tongue. Um, and uh, these uh, uh, terms you know, that comes with e to the two pi i tau that comes with further powers of one over tau two are uh, what Ashok Sen calls uh, uh, these non perturbation theory results uh, that he explains um, in the context equals one string theory in his lectures. Uh, so, for example, uh, this leading term here is going to be this four disconnected disks. And the second term will involve diagrams like, like this, um, and, and so on and so forth. I hope you can see what I'm writing here. Um, okay. Um, but actually, uh, you know, this, this, there's, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this function is known exactly. Known uh, from uh, Susie uh, plus S duality. Uh, I guess I'm not supposed to lecture on Susie and S duality, so I won't really uh, say much about this. Um, but uh, you can see here that, so, so, you know, this function is known completely. This is, uh, I should mention, this is the work of uh, uh, Green and Gutkoro. Uh, back in 97. Um, so, um, you know, the closed string expansion is suppressed by every loop, every genus uh, is suppressed by a power of tau two to the minus two, right? G string squared. But you see here we have an open string expansion. So the suppression is, expansion parameter is not one over tau two squared, it's one over tau two. So in fact, it is kind of a miracle almost that this uh, whatever SUSI and s the constraints on the function uh, give you a result that exactly has the right, uh, you know, diagrammatic expansion structure. The perturbative terms are suppressed by closed string coupling. The non-perturbative terms are suppressed by powers of open string, successive powers of open string coupling. Okay. Um, so uh, we're going to see something uh, very similar to that uh, in uh, the matrix model for C equals one string theory, in fact. Okay, um, but I just want to illustrate this in a, in a known example in super string theory. So, so just to just to to say that I'm not doing, uh, you know, this. Um, there's some precedence for for this kind of computations. Uh, however, um, the honest computation for these thin sum effects in uh, type two B string theory uh, has not yet been done, uh, ex except for the leading order term, um, and this is actually currently some work in progress. Um, but I will not discuss that uh, in detail uh, right now. Um, anyway, the point of this digression is to explain that uh, the Dean's Town corrections sometimes are completely well defined. And furthermore, they are corrections on top of the perturbative series. Uh, in, this, in, in this particular example for this R to the fourth term in the full graph on scattering amplitude, the perturbative series terminates at one loop. And, but on top of that, there are non trivial uh, Dean's Town uh, expansion. Okay. So uh, now we're back to uh, C equals one string. Um, so in this case, uh, what are the d instant tongues? Uh, the d instant tongues, uh, they should be uh, Dirichlet in time, in this time like boson, x naught. Uh, and um, well, there should be some kind of brain in Lubiel theory. And I'm going to take it to be the ZZ uh, brain in Lubiel. Uh, the reason is because intuitively the FZT brains are semi-infinite objects. They will have infinite action. So they will not contribute to the closed string scattering. Um, but the reason, there's a reason I discuss FZT brain. They'll, they'll play a role later, but in a different context. For the instant contribution to closed string scattering, the FZT brain will not play any role. OK. Um, so. Um, uh, the picture is like this. So we've got uh, time and we have space, which is Louisville direction. Uh, but uh, the, this, the Z brains are all kind of stuck uh, in the strong company region. They can be, you know, we can have several of them and uh, they can uh, mediate, you know, closed string uh, scattering like that. <clears throat> um, so, you know, if there'll be uh, some, you know, th this will correspond to some kind of three instant time contribution to some four closed string. Uh, scattering amplitude. Um, okay. Um, now, uh, with hindsight, I'm going to uh, make another remark. So, notes. 
Uh, in fact, there are other types of ZZ instantons. There are the so-called higher uh, ZZ instantons. So, so I'm referring to this as a as a ZZ instanton here, because they involve ZZ brain in Louisville theory. Um, but uh, in fact, there are more. Um, so uh, it turns out that um, uh, earlier, you know, I described this ZZ boundary condition. Um, uh, in fact, if you look at the original paper in 99 by Zemlogikov and Zemlogikov called Lugo theory on the pseudosphere in which they discovered this boundary condition, um, they actually talked about a, a two integer parameter family of boundary conditions, which I can label by a ZZ uh, M comma N. Um, most of these are actually not unitary, but um, you'll, you'll see that in fact, uh, in the case of the instant time, uh, it seems that these non-unitary boundary conditions can also play a role. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, so let me just define these boundary conditions for the moment. Uh, so if you can, again, can see Lugo theory on the strip, the original ZZ boundary condition I introduced earlier is the, of the type one comma one. Um, if you have another M comma N type ZZ boundary condition, this Hilbert space with a one comma one on the left and M comma N on the right, uh, again, contains a unique primary I will call psi M comma N. Uh, this is in fact, uh, a degenerate uh, Versor primary is going to have a uh, weight um, for generic uh, Q will be Q squared over four minus uh, MB plus N over B squared over four. Uh, so this uh, is a primary with the level M times N uh, now descendant. Uh, descendant. This. Okay, so it's, uh, it's a, uh, has a special weight. Um, anyway, uh, I'm not gonna explain why this solved the conformal bootstrap uh, relations, the modular bootstrap relations, um, but one can solve for the, uh, uh, in an analogous way, the disk um, uh, one point function in the presence of this M comma N type ZZ boundary condition. Uh, there's a formula for this, let me just write it down. Uh, it includes the previous case as a special case the previous, the elementary ZZ boundary condition with the one comma one type as a special case. Okay. <clears throat> um, all right. So um, the claim is that uh, in fact, the elementary ZZ instant time, uh, its action with one comma one type is instant action is gonna be one over uh, the string coupling. Um, uh, formally, this instant action is uh, sort of uh, this minus this instant action uh, is the uh, empty disk diagram. Well, maybe I should put the quotation mark on the. Oh, well, let me just write red like this. This is the uh, empty disk. Um, the idea is that you know this is e to instant. Uh, uh, suppression factor can be thought of as exponentiating empty disks. Okay, because you have you're supposed to sum over all the you know, disk connect diagrams as, as well, but uh, you have this empty disk that's supposed to give rise to this e to the minus instant now factor. Um, we don't actually know how to compute the empty disk directly. I don't have a rigorous argument for this because uh, you see, um, uh, I can talk about this one point function, but, uh, but I cannot take the operator VP to be identity. Identity is not in the spectrum, it's not normalizable. So the VP contains only the normalized delta function normalizable states. Um, but uh, formally, if I take, uh, consider the end of the continuation of P going to I, then uh, V, you know, if I take P to I, then the weight of uh, VP, which is uh, H with one plus P squared goes to zero. So that uh, kind of imitates the identity operator. Um, uh, but this is not kind of a rig rigorous argument, but I can, um, you know, use this argument, this is kind of a, a sloppy argument uh, to motivate the idea that you have the M comma N ZZ instant time. Um, its action, uh, which is a disk diagram with M comma N type boundary condition uh, would be, uh, well, compared to S one comma one type um, ZZ instant time, uh, the ratio is gonna be given by uh, the one point function psi M comma NP uh, divided by psi M comma N, um, sorry, um, psi, uh, one comma one p uh, in the limit with the other continuation of p going to i. 
And if you do this exercise, you find that the answer is uh, m times n over uh, g string. Okay, so this uh, uh, you know uh, <clears throat> this argument suggests that uh, perhaps uh, you know if this m comma n type zinc tons do in, in fact contribute, um, they will uh, have each one will have m times n times the action of a elementary zinc instant Um now, uh, the upshot is going to be that generally for high instance, it turns out that it seems like this M comma N type will generally contribute, uh, but I'll, I'll come to that at the end of uh, this lecture. Sorry, so uh, but, how, how do you get the, the result that the, the, the one comma one type, uh, the, the, uh, the action is just uh, one over G string? Um, so uh, uh, a, uh, there's a, actually there's a clean argument for this. Um, so, um, you can derive this by comparing um, the Z instant to the ZZ brain. Okay, so the ZZ brain corresponds to the eigenvalue sitting at the top of the potential. In other words, when the, uh, the, 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 um, the mass uh, of the ZZ brain is the height of the potential above the Fermi surface. Okay, and, and there's an unambiguous way to convert the mass of the ZZ brain to, um, to um, the, uh, the action of the ZZ instant time. So the ways to do something like a reality in the time um, that the, the brain doing uh, Yes, for, for instance, you can do that. I mean, there are, there are various ways to, to arrive at that answer. Mm, okay. Um, okay. Um, so now uh, let me uh, discuss the actual computation of um, um, uh, of the instant mediated clustering amplitude. Um, to get started, uh, you know, uh, one of the basic objects we're going to encounter, uh, which is the sub diagram, the Walsh diagram, is going to be the disk with one clustering insertion. So let me just discuss this thing first. Um, so here, the clustering vertex operator I'm going to insert is v omega plus minus. Uh, this is uh, g string times e to the plus minus i omega x naught uh, and vp equals omega over two. This I introduced last uh, in the first lecture, I guess. Um, so um, now uh, the boundary condition is uh, here is Dirichlet uh, in the uh, free time like free boson tensored with zz. All right. Now this Dirichlet boundary condition depends on uh, a uh, the coordinates x or x naught. In time, right. this is a good old Dirichlet boundary condition for x naught, um, and because of this dependence on, on time, uh, on the on the on the time of the, you know, the location of the instant time in time, um, the one point function in the free boson part, the time like boson part, is going to explicitly depend on this x. Okay, so this. Um, um, uh, this disk um, um, uh, well this disk amplitude uh, or you know, correlator with this insertion uh, is uh, simply given by the string coupling uh, times um, there's a normal string factor come with all this topology called the CD2 divided by 2 pi because of the um, residual conformal killing group that rotates uh, around the insertion of the vertex operator uh, and then there's going to be uh, this factor of e to the uh, plus minus i omega x, where x is the location of the instant time in time. And then there's going to be the one point function of this uh, Liouville vertex operator, which is psi, let's say with m comma n type, this will be psi uh, m comma n uh, p equals omega over two. Okay, so uh, now, um, so far I haven't really discussed um, um, you know, uh, open string uh, uh, scattering, uh, and it uh, may not be obvious what this CD2 is. Uh, so there, there are indirect arguments to determine this, uh, but let me not bother with that for now. I'll just tell you the answer. This is going to go like some number over the string coupling, and this number can be fixed unambiguously by studying open string scattering. Um, <clears throat> uh, so anyway, uh, 
I won't explain how to fix that number for the moment, uh, but if you carefully fix the number, the, the answer looks like two, just, you know, this is a plus minus i omega x and cinch uh, pi omega cinch m pi omega uh, over cinch pi omega. Yeah, these are kind of the kind of uh, uh, answers that shows up. So this will be a building block in the instant mediated contribution to the closing amplitude. Um, okay, so uh, now let's consider let's consider the actual uh, closed string amplitude. So closed string uh, one to one amplitude. The simplest non-trivial example. So this is what I call a one to one uh, in the first lecture. Uh, it has uh, some. Uh, so let's consider the leading uh, d instant time contribution. Um, okay, so how do we compute this? Well, um, uh, as, as I said, uh, it's supposed to look like, you know, e to the minus instant action times uh, to leading order, uh, you want to have as many disks as you can. So you have two disks, each one has one insertion. So let's say this is a plus incoming state and this is outgoing. And the two boundaries, they both end on instant time at time x naught. And then you have to perform the integration uh, over um, over the moduli. Okay, so uh, to put this in the formula, uh, we have to integrate over the instant modular x naught. Uh, we have the, this e to the minus one over g string factor, and we've got uh, v omega, let's say plus, and another v omega uh, prime minus. Uh, omega omega prime are the energy of the incoming outgoing string um, uh, closed string state. Uh, so the, this is on the on the disk. Uh, they involve uh, you know uh, x naught. Uh, they depend on x naught. They involve the z boundary condition in Louisville. So is this. Um, and at this point, I do not actually know the overall normalization. Uh, I'll just call it curly n. Uh, I think in Ashok's lectures uh, at the very end, he discussed uh, how to understand normalization. Uh, from uh, string field theory. Uh, my lecture is not as sophisticated, so I will not attempt to determine this n uh, for the moment. I'm just going to try to fix it as a universal constant by comparing the answer to the matrix model. Okay, so uh, now uh, let's do this calculation. Uh, well, I already told you what these uh, this one point functions are. I wrote, wrote them above, uh, even for the more general case. So, so for right now, I'm only considering the elementary one comma one type ZZ instant time. Uh, so the answer is very simple. Um, you see, um, uh, so this guy here is proportional to e to the i omega x naught. This guy here is proportional to e to the uh, uh, minus i prime omega prime x naught. So uh, each by itself, the energy is not conserved. Um, but if you integrate over the moduli x naught into the moduli, then you get a delta function that imposes implements energy conservation. So the result is two pi delta omega minus omega prime times uh, this curly n e to the minus one over g string, and then some factor four times cinch squared pi omega. Okay, so so far this n is still undetermined over normalization. It could have been zero, maybe it's zero. Okay, if it's zero, maybe it'll be disappointing that there'll be no instant contributions, but we'll see. Uh, but the energy dependence nonetheless is completely unambiguous. It goes like it's proportional to a cinch squared pi omega. Okay. Uh, so now let's compare uh, to uh, matrix quantum mechanics. Uh, now this would only make sense if I have a non-perturbative definition of the matrix quantum mechanics. Last lecture, I gave a proposal for what is supposed to be the correct non-perturbative completion of a C equals one matrix quantum mechanics. I'm going to use that propose proposal. Um, so uh, in that using that proposal and this formula of uh, Moore, Plesser, and Ramgulam, uh, the one-to-one -one amplitude. Um, uh, is given by exactly by integral um, uh, dx from zero to omega, uh, uh, the particle reflection amplitude of the uh, fermion bouncing back from this potential minus mu plus omega minus x as I wrote last time and the whole reflection amplitude minus mu minus x. Um, and remember this uh, rh is uh, uh, the same as rp inverse. 
Okay. So, uh, and I gave the formula for RP last time. It is involves the square root of this ratio of gamma functions, as you might remember, and I discussed its borough sum ability. Um, so you can plug that all into this integral and just expand. Okay. Um, and uh, you can separate this expansion into the perturbative part, which by itself is borough summable, and the non-perturbative part. So let me just write down the general structure of this expansion. Uh, the perturbative part is something that people have studied, you know, already way back in the uh, in the early '90s. Um, so sum over, uh, let me call this uh, G. The, G should you know the genus? Maybe I should uh, call it H to not avoid confusion with the coupling. So H uh, from zero to infinity, uh, one over mu to the power two H. <clears throat> the perturbative amplitude, I call A perturbative one to one uh, at uh, genus H, genus. H. Um, okay, so this is supposed to be the closed string loop expansion, and I'm going to use the sum to represent the Borel uh, resummed uh, answer. Uh, and then on top of this, we're, we're going to have non perturbative corrections. Uh, remember, last time I wrote in this, under the square root, there's this factor 1 over 1 plus e to 2 pi e, which I claimed was non perturbative. So all you need to do is just to expand that, that piece out. Um, you'll find sum over n from one to infinity, n here can be identified with the internal number, e to the minus two pi n mu. So this uh, two pi mu is gonna be identified with uh, one over g string. <clears throat> um, uh, sum over, uh, then at each internal number n, there's gonna be a open string loop expansion. Uh, something looks like open string loop expansion. It goes like one over mu to the power L, uh, a one to one, I call this the n instant time uh, L open string loop. This is the open loop contribution. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, uh, so this is something you can do uh, explicitly, and uh, each of these is understood to be Borel resummed. The instant expression itself, in this case, turns out to just converge. You don't have to worry about uh, um, resummation. So this is something you can just plug into Mathematica and calculate. Uh, whatever, whatever. There's uh, all these functions can, are are known. Um, so let me let me uh, just kind of uh, give you some idea of what they look like. Uh, so in fact, uh, in the first lecture, I discussed some aspects of the perturbative amplitude. So for perturbative amplitude at the tree level, one to one, in my convention, you know, it's just omega. It's really just one, but uh, because of my finalization of the asymptotic state, I'm call it omega. Um, and uh, uh, at uh, genus one, this is the one that uh, you know I described. Uh, it's matching with, um, with the Walsh calculation at genus one two point. Uh, looks like omega squared plus two omega fourth plus i omega fifth, and uh, so on and so forth. <clears throat> this is for the perturbative part. And then um, we have uh, one instant contribution. Uh, according to this proposal, the key of the proposal here is this R H equals R P inverse. Um, so uh, one to one at a zeroth open string loop order, um, the answer will look like uh, minus one over pi uh, sinh squared pi omega. This is what you get from the matrix model. Okay, so this is going to match with uh, what I claimed earlier. You see, the sinh squared will actually match. And so this actually whoop, it. somehow it's connected to my phone. I mean, I need to somehow shut my phone down. I don't know. It's odd. Um, okay, sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> um, um, so um, uh, so this matches with the. Uh, um, as far as the omega, the energy dependence is concerned, it agrees with the computation I sketched above uh, and uh, fixes n to be uh, minus one over eight pi squared. Um, if you go on to the next order, you'll find some uh, more non-trivial looking function just from the matrix model computation. It looks like this omega pi omega over tench uh, pi omega uh, minus one times sinh squared 
pi omega, and so on and so forth. Um, and then you will have n is the contribution. Uh, so at uh, say leading order, uh, this is also some some known function. I won't bother writing this down, but uh, you can write this explicitly. <clears throat> it involves some kind of truncated hypergeometric hypergeometric function. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so far we have some evidence that at least this guy seems to to agree, provided that we fix this normalization constant n to agree with the matrix model. Uh, let me make a few comments. Um, so you could wonder, you know, that there are um, infinitely many different uh, ways to non-perturbatively quote unquote complete that matrix model if you only know the perturbative part, because you have this potential like this, so you can do, you know, perturbatively, this Fermi C doesn't see what's happening on the left-hand side, so you can just change it to some other potential. Um, so, you know, they all have the same perturbative answer. But non-perturbatively, non they are totally different. So, uh, for example, you could wonder, uh, maybe actually there's the other side of the Fermi C. This is what I call the zero B matrix quantum mechanics last time. Uh, this will correspond to a different uh, uh, scattering amplitude of these um, collective modes, which will cor correspond to RH. The whole amplitude is R RP star rather than RP inverse. Remember, RP amplitude is less than one here. Um, you can try this. In fact, we first tried this because we first thought maybe the actual completion is the zero B theory, but that's not true. So you can, you can try this. This does not agree, does not agree uh, with uh, the C equals one world sheet D instant time uh, computation uh, already at order, at the leading order, at order e to the minus one over GS. So that computation already rules out the possibility that it's due to the zero B major quantum mechanics. Uh, likewise, if you try something stupid like for the hard wall here, this also doesn't work. For the, you know, you can, can check this computation. Um, okay. Um, now, uh, from the string theory point of view, you can ask, you know, uh, what if there are no distant contribution at all? What if, what if this normalization constant is just equal to zero? So no, i.e. no d instant time contribution. What's wrong about the string theory? Because the particular series is broad summable. Maybe that's the full answer. Uh, well, um, there's nothing around that I can see directly from a string theory point of view as far as the string S matrix is concerned. However, if you want to imagine that the string theory has a matrix model dual uh, as some kind of, you know, uh, uh, which can be converted to a, to a non-relativistic fermion system, um, then uh, if the n had been equal to zero, this will amount to um, having the fermion uh, uh, reflection amplitude being just the perturbative part, which is uh, would be this expression, the ratio of these gamma functions, without the non-perturbative correction. Okay, but such a function is going to have um, uh, the branch cuts on the complex energy plane uh, rather than uh, poles. On the lower half plane, so there'll, there'll be branch cuts uh, rather than poles, and this is not good. Uh, this is not a non-relativistic quantum mechanics um, quantum mechanical system. Okay, so if you imagine the string theory somehow due to some you know matrix quantum me mechanics of the type I discussed, it doesn't matter what potential you use, um, it it can it, there has to be some instant correction. It cannot be that there are no instant correction at, at all. That's not possible. Any questions about these comments? <clears throat> um, okay, so uh, now let me discuss the uh, more non-trivial calculation uh, of the distinction effects uh, beyond the leading order. So let me consider the next to leading order. Um, and this was, in fact, the main subject of Ashok's, uh, Ashok Sen's lectures. Um, I'm going to uh, discuss this from uh, without using this string field theory technique, uh, which will not allow us to fix some of the ambiguities which we we'll have to fix by comparing with the matrix model. So uh, the next one being order uh, one, the instant time uh, contribution. Um, let's draw all the possible diagrams. So we have, uh, 
instead of two disks, we can have one disk with uh, the incoming and outgoing um, vertex operator. This is the first guy. There's another diagram where we have a disk and the annulus. Let me say plus and minus, and also the annulus and the disk. Um, and lastly, we can have uh, two uh, disks together with a uh, disk with two holes. All of these are the same order. All of these are at the order e to the minus one or gs times another factor of gs. Okay, so in principle, um, you know, following your, our nose, we would want to uh, compute all of these amplitudes and add them up. That will presumably be the order, you know, the next leading order, one is in down contribution. Um, but if you calculate these amplitudes, um, these diagrams are integral over the, the, the moduli space of the you know, relevant Riemann surface, um, they're all divergent. Um, they're divergent because um, there's a, it's due to the open string exchange. So <clears throat> if you uh, cut this along the open string channel, uh, um, <clears throat> there's an open string that propagates through here. Now, normally, let me contrast this to the textbook calculation of closed string scattering of a D brain. Um, if you if you have you know closed string bouncing off a D brain, uh, you also have diagrams like this. But in that case, this diagram is not divergent. The reason it's not divergent is because the closed string has some momentum that go into D brain and it has some momentum parallel to D brain. Uh, for generic arrangement of closed string momentum. Uh, the, if you decompose this diagram and cut it through the open string channel, the open string that's propagating through uh, is not on shell for generic closing momentum. Okay, so in that case, there'll be no divergence. But we're not talking about D brain, we're talking about the instant time. The D instant time has no world volume. So if the open string is on shell, it's always on shell, regardless of what the closing momentum is. Uh, and then we do have open string mode that's always on shell, it is the uh, collective mode that deforms, if you turn on this open stream mode, that deforms the position of the instant time in space time. This is the instant moduli. So there's the open string, um, open uh, string uh, collective mode, which corresponds to the vertex operator partial x naught itself. This, this guy is always on shell and it's always gonna give divergence. Okay, so if you compute this diagram, uh, generic, for generic energy of a closed string is always divergent. Uh, in fact, this was uh, already noted uh, by uh, Joe Polchinski back in 94, uh, even before D brains were discovered. He has understood the D instantons even before, some aspects of the D instantons even before D brains. Um, okay, so, so how, do you, uh, how do you make sense of this if these diagrams are divergent? Uh, well, um, the, the claim is that, well, in fact, these other diagrams, these diagrams, are also divergent. So this one, for example, you know, has a divergence from a similar open stream channel that looks like this. Oh, it's, just, it's the same diagram. So if you cut along this open string handle here, you have a similar open stream divergence. Uh, similarly for the third diagram. Okay, but it will, it will turn out that this divergence is actually canceled. So um, um, <clears throat> these, uh, And this one, the uh, open string divergence uh, cancel on these three diagrams. Um, we call these in our paper, we call this the, the uh, fischler saskine pochinsky mechanism. Um, uh, this is a cancellation of divergence between uh, worksheet diagrams of different topologies. Uh, which is a bit unusual. Uh, now, the last diagram, uh, well, this one, uh, whatever it is, is going to be uh, proportional to the leading order answer, uh, but multiplied by some uh, constant associated with this uh, disk with two holes. Um, without the, some technique from string filter, in the usual Anshao, you know, worksheet formalism, um, we cannot unambiguously calculate this diagram because it's going to be divergence all over the place. And there's no, um, uh, without using, without appealing to string field theory, there'll be no uh, consistent scheme to regularize these divergences. So the best we can do is to assume that in some appropriate regularization scheme, 
uh, this uh, this with two holes compute some constants. There's some constants, and if you do that, you can interpret this constants as a uh, order g string uh, correction uh, to uh, the zz brain action itself. Uh, but uh, so far, from the worksheet point of view, we cannot com compute this unambiguously without appealing to the string field theory. And I'm just going to try to match this with a matrix model without actually doing the, this calculation. But it's just a number. I mean, here we have a whole non-trivial function to, to match with. So, uh, you know, it's sufficient non-trivial to, uh, the comparison is sufficient non-trivial to fix these numbers unambiguously in principle. Um, I should also mention that uh, this is a point that was emphasized in Ashok's, this is, you know, one of the main points of Ashok's lecture uh, is that um, even though the leading divergence due to this uh, open string collective mode exchange is canceled by this uh, FSP mechanism, uh, this is a cancellation of logarithmic divergences. And uh, um, there can be you know, finite shifts of the log uh, that are ambiguous. And once again, without appealing to string field theory, we do not have a way to determine uh, the finite piece of the log after doing this cancellation. Uh, and when we wrote the paper, uh, we simply fixed that by matching uh, numerically with the matrix model, but then Ashok uh, was able to fix that um, finite ambiguity using string field theory technique, and the results agree numerically. Um, so at this point, um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to decide whether I want to uh, describe uh, this computation in, in some more detail. Maybe I should write something down because uh, so far I'm just been drawing pictures. Maybe it's good to, uh, to get a better sense of how these computations are done. So, so let me describe this in a, in a bit more detail. Um, so the actual, so what do we actually compute? The actual computation. Um, let's start with a disk with two uh, closed strings. So V omega one plus V omega two minus. Uh, we have to regularize this somehow uh, because as I said, uh, there's this uh, logarithmic divergence due to the open string, Angsha open string exchange, and we have to somehow subtract that off. Okay, so I'm gonna regularize it in some way. Um, so what is this? Uh, well, uh, as usual, you know, this disk, uh, we can map this to the upper half plane uh, with one vertex operator at uh, point i, the other one at i times y, and the y lives on interval zero to one, and we're gonna integrate y over the range zero to one, as usual, so integrate over up and down. Um, okay, so this is V plus, here's V minus. <clears throat> okay, so if you do this calculation, so there are some uh, normalization factors, G S squared, uh, D2, uh, sorry, this uh, over normalization, CD2, there's gonna be E to the I omega one minus omega two X naught from the Dirichlet boundary condition of the free boson part. Uh, there's some, a uh, normalization factor, which I won't really explain. I'm just going to write it down here. There's some depending on energy. Um, the, uh, and then there's integration over the moduli. Um, of, of course, the non-trivial part of the integrand is uh, the correlation function in a CFT um, with the appropriate ghost insertion. Uh, now, the ghost part, as well as the free boson part, is very easy to calculate. Uh, I've already uh, you know, exhibited the, the part that depends on the boundary, uh, the Dirichlet the boundary condition. Um, so um, anyway, the free, the, the free free CFT, the free boson and the ghost correlator is some power of Y and one plus Y and Y minus Y. So this looks like um, like this, uh, one minus Y to some power, one plus Y to some power. Um, and the most non-trivial part is gonna be the Luvial correlator uh, which is a two-point function, v omega one over two at position i, v omega two over two at position i times y. Um, so this is the Luvial correlator on the disk with the zz boundary condition. Uh, so this is the most non-trivial uh, thing in here that we have to calculate. Uh, and that will be it, uh, but it's divergent. Okay, so we have to subtract all the divergence. Uh, and in fact, if you look at this divergence carefully, the divergence occurs in the limit y go to zero. So y go to zero, there's a divergence. That, that, that's when the you know, open string channel goes on shell. Um, 
And in fact, uh, there's a divergence, there's a power divergence and then there's log divergence. The power divergence is due to open string tachyon. The power divergence is due to the exchange of the open string collect collective mode. We have to subtract both off. Um, so, um, uh, so it turns out that the subtraction looks like this. So there's some constant. I won't explain this in detail. There's some gonna, there's gonna be some numerical factor, uh, which is not very important for my purpose here. Uh, there's gonna be um, the disk one point function of the Luvio vertex operators because it's related to the factorization of the disk, uh, the, you know, this into the, the two disks, uh, each one with, with some uh, uh, insertion of uh, uh, some simple open stream vertex operator. And omega one over two, so I ZZ omega two over two, um, multiplying uh, y to the minus two, minus two omega one, omega two y inverse. Uh, so as I said, this is due to um, the open string tachyon exchange and uh, quote unquote tachyon on the decent town. This one is the open string uh, collective mode. <clears throat> um, okay, so uh, the important thing to note here, actually the, this, this numerical factor here cancels again the factor outside. Uh, so the energy dependence such that it just factorizes into two uh, disk diagrams with just closed string insertion. Um, and uh, um, this open string tachyon exchange uh, does not have additional energy dependence, whereas the open string collective mode has some energy dependence, omega one, omega two. This is because if you insert this partial x naught on the boundary, this is proportional to uh, this is goes like you know omega, um, um, well, you know, times this amplitude uh, without the collective mode insertion. I think this essentially Ashok has explained in, in his lectures. Similar structure shows up here. Um, okay, now uh, this recognition scheme is a bit arbitrary. I simply declare that I'm gonna subtract off uh, this log divergence and power divergence in, the, in this way. As I said, this subtraction can introduce a constant ambiguity for this logarithmic uh, cutoff, um, but this ambiguity will be added in at the end by comparison with the matrix model, but it's a single number. Okay, so that's the, that's the regularized disk uh, two-point amplitude. Um, I haven't actually explained this Luvio uh, two-point function yet. I'll come back to that. Uh, let's now, uh, but it's some well-defined function, okay? So, so we can, you know, use the DOZZ. Oh, actually, in this case, it doesn't even require DOZZ. I'll, I'll come to that. Um, so um, uh, now for the uh, for this annulus with a closed ring insertion, and uh, let's say V omega plus, we also have to compute this guy regularized. So for this, uh, let's parameterize this uh, annulus as uh, uh, this um, rectangle with the top and bottom identified. This is from zero to pi. This is uh, two pi t, and uh, the closed string is inserted over here. Let's say, uh, and this distance, let's call it two pi x. So x is uh, so both t and x are the moduli of this one punctured annulus, so integrate over the moduli space. So this looks like uh, four pi squared uh, g s times some normalization associated with the annulus. Uh, this turned out, turn out to be one, uh, but I won't justify that here. Um, e to the i omega x naught, because due to the Dirichlet boundary condition of the free boson, then the integration of the moduli equal over t, integral over x, it suffice to integrate over you know, a part of the moduli space because of some symmetry um, of the flipping the, the strip left and right. Um, and then uh, we just have to compute um, uh, the torus, sorry, uh, the uh, annulus one point function. Uh, now this involves the ghosts, the free boson and Luvio. The ghost and free boson is easy. So this is some standard torus uh, can be using doubling trick can be converted to a torus correlator. It looks like eta it and some theta function two pi over no, partial mu uh, theta one. Uh, where tau is it, and I guess, uh, let me just write this it. Um, this is in Pochinski notation. If you don't remember what these the functions are, you can look up Pochinski chapter six or seven, I guess. Um, anyway, um, times um, the uh, annulus one point function of Duville theory of VP, P equals omega over two, at the coordinates uh, two pi x. Um, this is on the, on the annulus with the modulus t uh, and the ZZ boundary condition in the Louisville theory. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, once again, that will be all, uh, except that there's a divergent. The answer is divergent. We have to subtract the divergence by some regularization scheme. Um, so the sub subtraction looks like something that's proportional to, uh, there's some constant A, which I want to explain here, um, uh, is again proportional to this one point function of the closure insertion. And uh, then there's some um, uh, factor like this. Uh, this has actually appeared in Ashok's lecture. Um, so uh, this divergence is uh, in the limit t equals to infinity. Okay, that's the open string divergence when this strip becomes very long. Um, so you see here you have a exponential divergence, which again is due to open string tachyon and other stuff um, in the running the loop. And this one is again the open string uh, collective mode running the loop. Um, and that's it. <clears throat> uh, and once again, you know, there's some potential ambiguity in this logarithmic um, uh, divergence uh, cutoff, uh, which we'll fix by uh, adjusting some finite constant. Okay, so um, um, at this point, I guess I still have to explain how to compute the Liouville correlator, um, which is, uh, you know, in some sense is actually the technical crux of, of this problem, but, uh, but thankfully we have already developed the technology for handling these Liouville correlators in the study of pertur perturbative sequence one string theory. So this is, is nothing new. Um, so uh, the Liouville, uh, correlator, uh, correlators of interest are the following. Uh, so there's the disk with the two uh, insert, uh, operating insertion with the ZZ boundary condition, uh, as well as the, um, the the other one is the annulus uh, with just the one vertex operator and the ZZ boundary condition inside and outside. Okay, so how do we compute this? Well, uh, each one admits two different conformal block decomposition. You can either decompose in this channel uh, or equivalently decompose in uh, this channel. So there's an open string channel and the closing channel. I hope it's clear what this picture means. So in the second, the closing channel, I have to integrate over the intermediate uh, closed string states, in this case, the Luvial uh, vertex operator VP. Uh, so here I have to uh, use uh, the uh, here we have a disk one point function here, and we've got um, uh, the DOZZ, this is DOZZ structure constant. Uh, in this other conformal block decomposition, remember uh, the ZZ boundary condition only supports the identity operator. So this is just one, and uh, just reduced to uh, uh, you know, this one point amplitude, uh, but you still have to compute the conformal block. Uh, so these are conformal blocks on the, of the disk two point function, um, but luckily, uh, by the doubling trick, in fact, this conform block are the are the same. This is the same block, same block uh, as um, the sphere four point conform block with identity exchange, and this is the same block uh, as uh, the sphere four point block with the um, generic uh, Liouville primary exchange. So all of these can be calculated using numerically efficiently using recursion formula. Uh, so this is not a problem to compute numerically. But the result is something complicated. There's no you know, elementary expression for these correlators. Okay. Um, this guy here uh, is similar to the Torres two-point function in Liouville theory. And thankfully, we have also th done that. In fact, if we didn't write our first paper on this, in which we compute the genus one two-point amplitude in Liouville theory, this would have been a daunting task. Uh, but you know, thankfully, that was, was already done. So we can just use the same conformal blocks. Uh, so there's one channel which looks like uh, this, uh, but and, and once again, this is just identity operator propagating over here. And there's an, another um, conformal block decomposition which is equivalent, and that it has integration over DP1, DP2. Um, so it looks like this. You have the closed string. Um, this ends on a disk. This ends on, on another disk. Uh, where here you got P1 and here you got P2. <clears throat> And you have ZZ boundary condition here and here. This is ZZ and this is ZZ. Uh, and once again, the relevant conformal block is the same. So the same blo conformal block as the Torres two-point uh, block uh, in the, this is in the OPE channel. 
with only vacuum propagating in, in, in the loop and in this internal propagator. Uh, this is the same uh, component block uh, as uh, the necklace channel uh, uh, towards two point uh, component block with the P1 propagating here and P2 propagating here. So all of these, we have a recursion formula to, to compute. Uh, it's not a problem. Okay, so, so anyway, the summary, summary is that all of these coding functions can be computed e efficiently numerically, even though it takes some work. In fact, uh, looking at this, you might think that, okay, why don't we always use these identity uh, exchange blocks? Um, it turns out that that's only good in a part of the modular space. So we have to divide the modular space into different domains. In some part of the modular space, we use one component block decomposition, which is numerically precise, uh, you know, more accurate in the other domain, we have to use this other component block decomposition, which is numerically uh, more accurate if you truncate a component block. Um, anyway, so that's in principle how you would uh, calculate these things. Um, and we just compute this numerically. Uh, finally, finally, let me come, come to the ambiguity. So the ambiguity, ambiguity in this amplitude, uh, as I mentioned, it looks like this. Um, there's some normalization constant overall, uh, there's this um, uh, this thing that corresponds to you know, the, the, the sphere with two holes uh, that give rise to a constant I call SZZ1. This is like a, you know, uh, like a loop correction to the incident action multiplying by sinh squared uh, pi omega, which are the two disk one point functions. Um, and then there's the other constant called C prime uh, omega squared uh, sinh squared pi omega. Uh, the second constant is the uh, ambiguity in this uh, frischler saskin polchinski uh, mechanism of the, in which the log is canceled, but there's a residual ambiguity. So this constant C prime, at the time when we wrote the paper, we didn't know how to fix from the worksheet. Ashok Sen has shown, shown that using string field theory, you can fix this constant to be minus log four, which is approximately minus 1.3 A6. Um, and uh, we simply fit this numerically uh, to the major quantum mechanics answer, which I wrote earlier, the weinstein tang answer at this order, um, uh, at the subdivision order is uh, something like this, minus i e to the minus two pi mu, which is same as e to the minus one over g string over two pi square mu, um, some non trivial function like omega pi omega over tench uh, pi omega minus one uh, times sinh squared pi omega, uh, and uh, after a lot of work, uh, we're able to fit this within 1% uh, error, which you might recall is the same order of error where we match the torus two-point amplitude um, with the matrix model, perturbatively. Um, and this will fix uh, fixes uh, numerically uh, these constants. Uh, this one is some number. Uh, and the C prime is some other number, which we fix to be, you know, about minus 1.4. And if you can compare these, they kind of uh, differ, uh, they, they kind of sort of agree within the expected numerical error. So, uh, so that seems to be a success. Um, OK, so to summarize, uh, you know, apart from these uh, constants, which you have to fix either using string filter argument or by comparing with the matrix model, um, uh, the result at, at this subleading order uh, for one instant contribution to the closed string one-to-one -one amplitude is in some kind of miraculous agreement with this very non-trivial function that we get from the matrix model. Um, I guess I have to stop here because uh, I'm out of time. Um, I uh, intend to also discuss a little bit about the multi-instant contribution, which is actually also very non-trivial. And in fact, I mentioned earlier that there are these higher ZZ instant, instant that will contribute. Um, Perhaps I'll say a few words about that at the beginning of uh, uh, tomorrow's lecture. So I stop here. Okay, let's thank C for a very nice lecture. Uh, any questions for C? Yeah, so <clears throat> uh, you are thinking about uh, theory where you have just one new bill uh, uh, theory contact uh, interact with uh, say time. Can you have, uh, say, Toda mothers for this type of series? So. Um, <clears throat> I 
So, um, uh, if you let me see, so I think that will not be at least in the, in this setting, it will not be a tachyon free uh, closing tachyon. It will not be closed free of closing tachyon. I think. Um, I think the liberal theory, if if you assume the Walsh CFT is x naught direct sum with the Siegel twenty five CFT, I think the liberal theory is the only thing you can have that um, um, that doesn't have uh, uh, any relevant normalizable relevant operator. The total theory. Uh, you know, looks, uh, it's like liberal theory with two directions, right? or, or more, two or more directions. And right. uh, so it's, uh, it's more like, you know, non-critical string theory in higher than two dimensions. Um, but I think you will still have uh, the usual closure and tachyon uh, problem. Mm. Okay, thank yeah. you. So I have a, a, a bit technical question. So um, about the, the integral over the Madrai space. Yeah. And um, when you consider the, the convol block expansion, um, it, so, so, so you said that it's just, the, uh, it, it's just for numerical efficiency that you need to consider two different types of convol block expansion. Right, right. Or, or, or uh, so, so if I just consider a, a single single type of convolved expansion, would, would that converge for the entire modular space? I mean, um, uh, you have to use the right variables. Uh, you cannot, for example, you know, if you use the usual, uh, uh, for example, this forest convolved block. Uh, okay, so uh, as you might know, for the um, uh, uh, the sphere full point block, there's uh, two different recursions. There's a C recursion and, and H recursion. There's a recursion in center charge and recursion in conformal mm -hmm. wave. Um, uh, but for the torus, we we'll just write this in the C recursion uh, um, in our, my paper, paper with uh, Minjay and Scott. And um, uh, there we wrote the conformal block uh, as a function of these plumbing parameters. If you just naively use the plumbing, plumbing parameters, the convergence is pretty bad. Um, so here one has to do some kind of clever change of variable uh, to basically change from uh, the plumbing parameter that looks like cross ratios to what's you know, and I guess to the elliptic norm, elliptic norm in the context of the sphere four point, uh, which will drastically improve the convergence property. So, so this is actually a very important technical point, and uh, we discussed this in in some detail in the original uh, in the first um, single strand string paper three years ago. Uh, we have a few sections in which uh, the you know this choice of coordinate system on which part of the modular space you know this was discussed in, in some detail. Um, it was. Uh, for the numerical efficiency, it's pretty important that we use both channels. And we check carefully that on the overlapping regime, mm. uh, the two different channels agree to reasonable accuracy. Mm. I mean, in fact, that's kind of an important cross check. So, because so this, for the... Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, with this recursion formula, uh, you, it, they're so complicated, you're you know, afraid that you'll be making some mistake in your computer codes. So it's absolutely mm. essential to mm. check the crossing. Mm. So for the, for the one uh, that's uh, analogous to the the genus one two point uh, block, and uh, you you can find out some variable that's similar to the Lviv norm, and then then you can show yes, that yes yes that, that's if, correct if, 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 yes and 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 you can show that if, if you use that right variables, then then the convol block expansion converge for the entire modular space. Uh, no, it doesn't converge for the entire modular space, but converge for some large domain. So okay. the thing is uh, even. Even if you want to divide it into different domains, you still want to use this uh, elliptic norm parameters to improve the rate of convergence. Mm -hmm. But but I think for the for the one that's similar to the the sphere four point, if you use elliptic norm, you can show that it converge for the entire. Uh, it, it will converge, but the question is how fast does it converge? Around. I mean, we don't want to compute hundred yes, terms yes. in this so, block. We just want to compute a few terms. So yeah 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 yeah. No, I I'm, I'm but I'm I'm interested in the question that that in whether in principle the, the, the series converge or not. So, so we know uh, that- so I don't the, quite remember the answer the to that. Four my, point impression is no. my impression was, was mm. no, but I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, you can just, mm. uh, but I think we kind of wrote it in, okay. in the paper. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm. 